Hey everybody, it's Fred Diamond. I am, of course, the producer of the Sales Game Changers podcast. I've done over 700 Sales Game Changers podcasts. I'm the co-founder of the Institute for Excellence in Sales. And uh, my good friend, John Knotts, is the author of numerous books, but he's specifically the author of the book, Crossing the Zone of Fear. So we're going to go through John's book, and I am going to do the exercises. John, it's great to see you. You, know, you and I have been LinkedIn friends for a long time. We've actually met in person in San Antonio, yes. where you are. I'm based in Northern Virginia. We've had some great conversations over the years. You, know, you spent a good part of your life in Michigan. I spent some time in the hills of Farmington. So even though I'm not from Detroit, we have uh, that little, um, you know, that uh, Midwest type of connection there. But I talk a lot at the Institute for Excellence in Sales, that for sales professionals to be successful, they need to be courageous. They need to address fear or eliminate fear. I'm going to get your insights on that. So we're going to get into this for seven episodes. We're going to go through your book. I'm going to be your guinea pig. I'm going to be uh, doing the exercises and you're going to help me get through this. And uh, after seven episodes, seven weeks, we're going to publish this podcast every weekend. Uh, I want to get past the zone uh, of fear. So John, introduce yourself. Tell us about the book. Why did you write this book? And by the way, if you're watching, there's the book, Crossing the Zone of Fear. It's uh, It's well done. And it's powerful. And I think we're going to help a lot of people. Uh, if we only help myself and you, that's even better. So tell us about the book. Why'd you write this book? Well, first off, my name's John Knotts, obviously. And <laughs> I, I'm i a personal and professional business coach and consultant. I've been doing this stuff for 34 years. <laughs> I got involved in the Air Force in this and continued. I loved what I was doing when I figured it all out and just kept on, kept on moving forward, moving up. And I started writing a book back in COVID 2020. It was July of 2020 on things that I had shared with clients, ways, methodologies, ideas, stuff that I had written in the past about what I call becoming unbelievably successful. And this has turned into one of the books that I published at the time. I was writing a lot about the concept of fear. See, I've discovered that there are three things that hold us back from success. One of those is complacency. We achieve something big, we get that big sale. You know, that first $10 million sale or something like that. And we're like, I can sit back and I can relax. And what happens is when you're, truly trying to become unbelievably successful, you're constantly being successful and having the opportunity of becoming complacent. So when you when that complacency kicks in, success falters. And it can be hard to restart because it's kind of like a rolling stone. Then the, the second thing is stress. And we all deal with stress. Everybody deals with stress. And I know there's a lot of people on social media that talk about self-care and mindfulness and <laughs> you, know, you name it, a lot of things out there. But honestly, the big thing that we're really trying to deal with is to lower our stress levels. Because when we're stressed, we can't think. We can't operate. We can't move forward. And stress is, in, in some ways, connected to fear. But the third is fear. And there are a lot of fears out there. And I'm not talking about like fear of heights. Mm. That's a real fear. I mean, I get it. My wife has fear of heights. I'm talking about fear around success, professional fears that hold us back. So I was writing a lot about this. And I work with this organization here in San Antonio. It's called Executive Book Review. Mm. And Mark Wittig, who's the president of the organization said, Hey, you, you're talking a lot about fear. This is a really important topic. I think we should do a book review on fear, maybe a special event. Well, that didn't actually get booked to like two years later because of the schedules were already full, but 
when I started to prepare for this, I went out and I started to research books on fear. And there isn't a whole lot on there. So I decided I'm going to write a book on fear and I'm going to put everything that I've learned into this book with the focus of identifying what professional fears are, why they occur and how to overcome them. And it's funny because, you know, pushing the boundary, I posted on social media, I am going to publish this book in two months, not just write it, publish it, have it out there so that it will be available for the book review and pushing the envelope. I published it in 26 days, wrote and published it in 26 days. And sometimes when you just put yourself out there, you kind of surprise yourself with what you're capable of doing. But that's kind of like the whole concept of overcoming fear. Yeah. And as we go through this, really understanding what what this is that we're working on and why it can be so difficult. You know, I love the way you said that. And uh, it is uh, the concept people, a lot of times they'll say, I have a fear of failure, but I think a fear of success is even bigger. You know, again, I've done over, over 700 sales game changers podcasts, and I've interviewed some amazing leaders from around the world at great companies like Amazon, Salesforce, Hilton, Oracle, et cetera. And they've all reached a highest level. They can keep going further. A lot of these people by doing a lot of the things we talk about. And we talk about things like, you know, in sales, there's so many things that people are afraid of asking for the business. You know, one of our uh, good friends, a guy named Steve Richard, uh, worked for a company where they tracked over 5 million sales calls. And I said to him, what's the one thing you learned from tracking over 5 million sales calls? And he said, less than half of the calls had any type of follow-up. Right. Mm -hmm. So here you are, you got someone on the line, which is a victory. And then kind of like what you said in the beginning, you have this person, you had a, every phone call, every first call is great. And the goal in sales, especially in the world of enterprise and, and corporate sales, where we deal with it, the Institute of Excellence in Sales, it's about getting to the next phone call and getting to the next call, or it could be a meeting or it could be an interaction, whatever it might be. Right. And the great salespeople, they know that it's, not one call is going to lead to a $10 million deal it might take you years, even like a $50,000 deal it might take you 20, 30 interactions, but John, half of the people scheduled the next thing. So why, why didn't you do it? You know, and we're teaching you how to do it. The question is, gee, I'd like to speak to you next Tuesday, or can we arrange a meeting for next Thursday with your CIO and us to go through or whatever it might be. It's pretty easy to ask for the next call, yet half the people didn't ask for it. And we've met so many people who didn't ask for the business, right? Or they went right to the close, right? They, you know, it's like met with a customer after a very short meeting, instead of like asking more challenging questions, which is kind of a core thing in enterprise sales. I've seen people who went right to the close. You know, it's like, hey, Mr. Customer, what's your problem? Customer talks for five minutes. Then the sales rep says, I can offer you a 20% discount on our solution. I can get it to you next Thursday. Well, you didn't ask anything to really understand the challenge. There's a fear too, a fear of maybe, you know, being exposed with, with what you don't know. So uh, I, I love the way you took the angle of the book. Uh, again, I talk to salespeople all the time who, who asked me, you know, what, what is my success? What is my advice for them for being successful? And it's like, you know, you got to be courageous and you got to learn. I mean, sales is a profession. So you got to be a professional, you know, which means understanding the customer journey and the sales process and, you know, who you need to be speaking to and how you need to speak and, you know, uh, presenting yourself and, you know, putting yourself out there. You know, uh, I'm amazed at how many, you and I are very active on LinkedIn. I'm amazed at how many people, are not even close to being active on LinkedIn, for terrified, example. Terrified of it. Yeah. Hey, there's a lot to unpack in what you said. I got to tell you, <laughs> um, there's so many things that I think about, you know, first off, the lack of follow-up, like people are terrified of networking. And yeah. I'm not just talking introverts, extroverts too. 
they're scared to go to a networking event, but they go there, they talk to some people, they never follow up. Yeah. I go to networking events all the time and nobody ever follows up with me. Yes. Nobody. And it's, it's just amazing. So I'm always watching that when I was really active in the air force sergeants association while I was in the air force, one of the big things we did is recruit new members, mm -hmm. getting people in. And we did a lot of recruiting events and it was always interesting how people would, they were very happy talking about the organization and what they knew, but asking somebody to sign up, mm -hmm. would you like to sign up yeah. after we've talked all about this? It's like that one little step because they don't want somebody to tell them no. Yes. That fear of rejection. Yes. It's kicking them in the face and they don't even realize it. This is the biggest thing that I, I learned about fear. Yeah. So what we do, don't what know do, anything about it. Yeah. You know, so what you wrote the book, you said in, in 26 days, uh, on the 27th day, what was the one thing that struck you? Well, on the 26th day and every book I've published, this is my sixth book working on, I'm about to get my seventh out there. It's pushing the button to submit. Mm. And I know you're an author, so you yeah. probably have felt this too. But when you're you're ready to release it to the world, and it's one thing to like post on social media about thoughts, yeah. not like a picture of your meal <laughs> or something. We did this over the weekend, the, the updates on Twitter or something. I'm talking like you're really sharing your thoughts to the world. But when you put it in a book like this, yeah, you're saying I'm an authority on this. Yes, and and then you're you're sitting there thinking, am I really? Huh? And where 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 is that coming from? That's called the imposter syndrome. Yes, which is a fear. It's yes. fear is manifested in a belief that am I really good enough to do? That? And I, yes, everybody. This is the thing. We all have fears. Right. We just don't admit it. Yeah. We we talk them away. We we say it's something else. Yes. Oh no, that happened. Or, you know, it, it's just we we make it clear in our minds because yes. we always have to lie to ourselves first before we can lie to anybody else that this is the reason why. And that's where fear gets buried. Yeah. And I think that's the reason why nobody writes about it. Because you know, it's, a, it's yeah. not understood. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, I'm interested in your thoughts. We we recently did a sales game changers podcast where the guests use the statement, um, "We all have fears, but you got to do it anyway." Right. That's courage, you know, right? Courage, exactly. You know, it's interesting. I wrote. You mentioned that I that I wrote two books. Um, I wrote a book. Uh, I wrote two books. Published them at the same time. Published a book on sales. Uh, that was based on a lot of the lessons from our sales game changers podcast. And as you know, I put, I published a book on Lyme disease and it was about relationships with people with a lot chronic Lyme disease, but also chronic illness as well. And I was very, you know, in the sales book, I wasn't particularly vulnerable. You know, there were <laughs> tips and strategies on being a better partner and how to prospect better based on what people had said. And I, I really had no fears with that book whatsoever. The Lyme book, I, I really didn't have a fear because I knew it needed to be published. You know, you talk that there was no book on fear published to that point. There was no book published for family members of uh, people who have what's called chronic Lyme disease. Lyme is a tick-borne illness. And it was literally, the, I actually wrote an article a year before that. And I had people in the Lyme world who reached out and said, no one's even written an article like this let alone a book. And I went very deep into some places that uh, even now, as I read the book two years later, I'm a little bit surprised where I went. But the other thing too, which, which you just said, which I liked is, I remember I worked at Apple computer for a long time and someone said an expert is someone who drives 50 miles and wears a suit, you know, to an event, you know, they drove 50, they came, they came from 50 miles away and they wore a suit. And, you know, I remember, you know, you and I are published, people are reading this book and they're not saying to themselves, 
ah, John Knotts, you know, he, he's full. Of, he doesn't know anything about fear. He's, he's scared of everything. And no one, no one has reached out to me about either the Lime or the sales book uh, and have said, you know, uh, you're, you're full of crap. You know, you don't know what you're talking about, and, you know, either of those things. So the courage for people out there, you and I, let's, let's give ourselves a pat on the back, but anybody who's published, right. Anybody who's posted anything on LinkedIn, anybody who's presented anything to a customer, you know, you're putting yourself out there and you got to do it. Do you agree? You got to do it more and more. And that's where success eventually leads you to. Well, I think that that's why the, the first question in the, in the back of the first seven pages is what did you know about fear prior to reading the book? Mm. Or what do you, what are your thoughts about fear? Because I think a lot of people don't, they don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to this. What did you, what did you think? Yeah. I agree. All right. So here's what we're going to do on the podcast. Uh, We're going to go for a number of pages. John is going to tell me how many pages to read at a time. And then like he alluded to, he has questions throughout the book. And uh, uh, I have answered those questions. And we're going to go through my answers with the expert on fear, John Knotts. And, And I'm an expert on sales success. And I truly believe getting past your fear. And we talk about this all the time, making the call, making a price presentation, saying what your price is. You know, a lot of people go with the right away. Uh, here's my price, but I'm going to give you a 20% discount. Well, I, I didn't ask you for a 20% discount. I mean, you may need to give it, but I see people, even myself, I've done this a couple of times where uh, my price for membership at the Institute is, is X, but since you're who you are, I'll give you 20%. Why? Why are you fearful of them saying no to your price? You know, I remember I worked for a large company called Compuware, based out of Detroit, and I worked for them in the in the late '90s. It was enterprise software, and uh, the guy who was in charge of the entire sales organization said, "You should be proud to be selling our product. If you're a sales professional with our company." You should be proud that you're offering this solution to a customer who's challenged with managing their computers, whatever we were solving the problem of. And that always stuck with me. It's like, well, why would you discount? Why would you give away? Now, sometimes you you may need to do some marketing to get in the door and a prototype and, you know, things like that. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's a fear that you need to get past. You know, there's plenty of people who've sold things that, MSRP, manufacturer suggested retail price. You know, a lot of times when we were running the Institute for Excellence in Sales, we would do in-person events. They weren't very expensive. They were 70 bucks, 80 bucks, whatever. And people would say, well, why don't you give me a free ticket so I can come and see what it's like. And then if I like it, I'll get my company to join. And I remember I would say, I don't think Springsteen gives away free tickets for people to experience him. And then if you like my concert, maybe five years from now, when I come through Oklahoma city again, you know, it's like, you're going to have to pay full retail price to see me, you know, Bruce Springsteen. And you know, that kind of thing. I remember it was like, and we want, although sometimes if it was like a strategic customer, you know, like a big company with a lot of salespeople, we might. All right. So John, get us caught up. Talk about the first seven pages of the book crossing the zone of fear. And, uh, and then we'll go through the questions at the end on page seven. I will answer the questions that you asked and I'm going to get your thoughts on my answers. We'll talk it through a little bit and then we'll tee up next week's show on the next chunk of pages. So tell us what you talked about on pages one through six. Uh, one, one through six is all, it's the forward. So it's really about why did I write this book? Why did I choose the name Crossing the Zone of Fear? That's what we're really focused on in in this little introductory to the book itself. I, you know, I'll tell you that I had two primary fears. I talk about them in the book. And one was fear of water, fear of swimming. And I know, I just, I don't know when it was, but I remember reading in a magazine somewhere about people that were swimming in open water and they got their legs wrapped around seaweed. And when you thrash, yeah. it'll actually tighten up on your legs and pull you down. And they would drown. Mm. And just that concept terrified me. 
and I wasn't a really, you know, like wasn't big into swimming or anything like that. So it was one of those things that I didn't know, didn't know what I didn't know. So, you know, like the fear yes. sat in and I was terrified of public speaking. Yes. When I was in high school, I would do everything to get out of having to do a formal speech or presentation to anything. And I decided I needed to face the fears and did some pretty crazy stuff. I, and, you know, fear of fear of swimming. So what do I do? I take a water safety course to learn to be a lifeguard. Yes. Not that I wanted to be a lifeguard. but <laughs> And then I, when I, I went into the air force and they required, I was pop in the air force and every morning you were tagged on the posting log who was going to give certain safety presentations in front of a 60 person flight. And when my name was up there, man, I was sweating bullets literally because I was a cop <laughs> and you just, you had to work through it. And finally I just said, you know what? I need to overcome this. So I went to college and I took, two speech classes in one interpersonal and one business yes. at the same time. So like you writing a, two books, publishing two books at the same time, I was taking a, you know, two speech classes at the same time and addressing these things really changed my life. And we'll, we'll talk about what that means yeah. when we get into like the third, the second chapter really of the, the book, but our third call. But really starting to understand my fear and why it was important to write this book. I talked about, well, basically I was writing, becoming unbelievably successful yeah. and was asked to put together a presentation, no book available. So it was written. And just the concept of crossing the zone of fear, because we've all seen the Venn diagram where you have the zone of comfort, the zone of fear, the zone of learning, the zone of growth. Yes. It's very typical. And I really, I see things differently in that. Yeah. And I really wanted to share that concept in this. So that's what that, the first parts of the book are all about. That first few pages. Yeah. I try not to belabor things yeah. when I write. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say it over and over again. <laughs> you yeah. read it and then let's talk about it. And that's what, it, let's talk about it is, what did you find? What did you know about fear before you cracked that book open? You know what? I, I want to address two things that you just said. So you talked about a fear of, of swimming, being in the water and a fear of speaking. Um, I got 0, 0.0 fear of speaking. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we're doing today's show on August 1st. Uh, my father just passed away uh, a week ago and I gave the eulogy. And it was in front of 80 people. I didn't have any notes. And I thought through what I was going to say, of course, I just didn't jump up there. But, you know, I was speaking in front of 80 people. And I told, a, if I must say so myself, a masterful eulogy. It, and it actually led to a really good point at the end about my father's life that I didn't even think about until I was towards the end of the eulogy and swimming as well. I'm not scared of swimming. I could jump in the middle of the ocean and swim and, and all those kinds of things. And I actually was almost uh, drowned when I was in third grade. Uh, I was at camp and we were at the, the big pool, the Olympic pool. And I remember this kid, Larry, took my head and kept pushing it down in the water. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? I was like screaming. And someone came over and took Larry away from me. And I don't, I went right back in the pool. It wasn't like, okay, I need to face my fear. The reason I'm telling you these two stories is, um, you know, people might be listening and saying like fear of swimming. I mean, less, less than exactly. one, less than 0 0.001 people per year. You know, people like one of the most irrational fears is like being in an airplane crash, but the odds of that happening are like 0 0.1, 0 0.000001, you know, type of a thing. But yeah, you know, we always hear this thing too, that people are scared to death of speaking. Besides death, people's biggest fear is fear of speaking. Yeah. What's it called? Glossophobia. <laughs> but, but I love it's to called. speak, but at the same time, I am, you know, you talked before about fear of heights. I think it's more fear of falling 
you know, I've been on the top of the World Trade Center, may rest in peace, but yes. I'm thinking like, I'm not really afraid of the height. I'm afraid of like falling 50 stories and it's going to be worse than fearing the fear. All right. So in your preface, so again, uh, I'm going to read your question here. Your question, like you just asked, you asked four questions here at the end. What do you already know about fear? And I answered, I know that fear is what prevents abundance. I know it's a natural feeling, but that you must, uh, that you, that you must move into it. Wait, but I think that you make more of it than it really is. Right. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, like I just said there before, it's like, uh, if I'm on a tall building, there's a chance that I could die. Well, it's pretty unlikely or else, you know, a lot of times I'll drive and the road is kind of like weird or the bridge or the turn. And then I say to myself, people aren't dying here. They, the United States road highway association, whatever department of highways, department of transportation, they wouldn't allow this road to be available if people were going to be flying off it. You know what I'm saying? You know, so so talk well, about that's my the reason answer. why they have speed limits, right? <laughs> yeah, and they have well, like exceed it. Yeah, I mean, they would close the bridge if there was a chance you were going to die, right? You know, if there was the the limited chance. So, what are your thoughts on my answer there? So, this is a, I think the the crux of the whole concept of the book is that few people really have thought about fear. Hmm. They don't typically until they pick this thing up, they don't really think about it. And what I want people to do is I want them, what have you thought about it in the past? If up until this point, before you get into this book, what do you, what do you know about fear and what do you think about fear? You know, the, the fascinating part about that is one of the reasons why, again, you and I are, we're very vocal on LinkedIn. We, we, you help, a lot of customers with your coaching. And I have a lot of sales professionals that are involved with the Institute for Excellence in Sales. And we have bigger aspirations. You know, we have big, if you're living like a basic life, just coming through the motions, yeah, you may not be thinking about what else is there. You know, one of the reasons why I was so attracted to this book is I want more out of life. You know, I want, and hopefully a lot of people listening to this or, or that are exposed to you and I on LinkedIn or wherever we are, they want more out of their careers. They want more out of their relationships. They want more out of their, um, you know, more wealth, you know, those types of things. Uh, they want to go higher, you know, and what occurred to me was, well, I know what those things are. I wrote a book, you know, I'm looking at your, you behind you. There's probably about a hundred books there behind you downstairs in my, uh, study, I have a hundred books and you and I read and we talk and we do presentations and we talk to, I talk to successful people every day and I post three podcasts every week, but I'm not worth a billion dollars. So, okay, well, why is that guy worth a billion? He's just as smart as me, probably, or he probably has, you know, maybe I'll give him more credit, but he has the same amount of hours in the, in the month. You know, he has the same challenges. He still has to, you know, eat a healthy, you know, healthy diet. So that's what really attracted me. Now that we're getting through this a little bit, John, you know, it's like everyone listening, we want more out of life. And when you want more out of life, and then you say to yourself, well, what's stopping me? Because it's, there's tons of books, you know, there's tons of, I used to tell people, uh, you know, there's tons of books on how to lose weight and there's tons of apps and there's tons of YouTube videos, but if you're not losing weight, well, what is the fear that you have that's preventing you? You know, you could right now go say into chat GPT, give me a diet for the next two weeks to lose 20 pounds. And within a 30 seconds, it's going to pop out a diet for you. Right. And then you ask a couple more questions to get more specific. Well, okay. Everything you need to know is available to you. What's stopping you? The second question you ask are what are your expectations from reading this book? And I said, my expectations are to figure out all that I fear and act upon them anyway. Does the book going to help me do that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> No, I will say that, I mean, like everything, everything I ever do as a coach is to always understand what is it that you expect out of this relationship first? Yeah. How are you going to measure that? Yeah. Because I want to make sure at the end of these seven calls 
you get exactly that out of this discussion. Yeah. And vicariously and, through me, I want, I want people watching this, you know, I, I work with, uh, you know, at the Institute for Excellence in Sales, we have two designations, premier sales employer and premier women in sales employer. And we also have a personal designation called premier sales leader. I want everybody who's associated with the Institute to become hugely successful in sales. And we're making things available to them to get better. We promise companies, we will help you attract, retain, develop, and elevate top tier sales talent. You know, we don't say, Hey, we're going to entertain you, you know, once a month, you know, we want you to achieve these amazing goals. Wow. This is great, John. <laughs> and in the line book too, I want you to achieve amazing relationships just because someone you love has a ridiculous disease and the work that you're doing too. I mean, think about why you wrote this book. I know we talked about it a lot, but you know, if people are going to get past these fears, think about what you can achieve. Good job, right. John. All right. The next question, what major fears do you have today? All right. So, you know, when you and I were talking about this, you know, I was talking about how vulnerable I was willing to be. And uh, I'm not going to go all in because some of these are, are kind of personal, but I, I will give a couple of them. Um, one of my fears, and this relates back to what you said before, one of my fears is that past decisions will come back to haunt me. You know, I tell people this, the reason you are in your life right now is because of a decision that you made. If you're happy, if you're sad, if you're fat, if you're thin, if you're successful, if you're single, it all goes back to decisions. Now, I also understand that trauma comes into play, et cetera. We're not going to go deep into trauma. Maybe we will. I haven't gone past page seven yet, but uh, we'll, we'll you know. talk about it. <laughs> so I talk a lot about, you know, one of my fears is that, you know, I've, uh, there's some decisions I've made that are affecting me. And the second uh, is that my business will not be as successful as it can be. Right. And even like we were talking before, I, I want my Institute for Excellence in Sales to be a, let's just throw out a number, X billion, uh, X million. Right. And I want to have X companies involved. Right. And I'm at X and I want to get to Y or X times X, whatever it might be. So what's, you know, the fears I am addressing is, well, what's stopping me from achieving those things? So I think that just putting those fears down, and I'm sure you have some other fears that are in your head, people that are reading this book and answering those questions, you don't have to get on a, <laughs> on a live <laughs> podcast and talk about it. But, you know, so I appreciate the vulnerability and the authenticity in that, but it, when we put something down like that, I want to grow my business to this much. First off, I'm as a strategic planning coach, I'm going to say, why only that? Yeah. Why not more? Yes. Why not the most you could possibly? You know, because because we always set these limitations based off our fears. Well, yes. I I don't know if I could handle that. I don't know if we could be that big. Yes. But that's the reason why we want to ask these questions right up front is that by putting your fears on paper, yeah. now you can start to address them because we're yes. going to start to understand why, what, what are they and yeah. why do they exist yeah. and how do I deal with them? And you know what? Um, I'm going to let people know who, who are listening to this when you get the book. You know, I wrote some additional fears down that I am going to, you know, challenge myself on getting past as I write the book. So we're going to be talking about some that specifically revolve around sales and business, but I want to people know there are a couple of fears here that I wrote down that are personal that I want to overcome. Uh, John, as a friend, you've heard a couple of these uh, before, but uh, I encourage you as you go through the process that I'm going through that you address them and you got to write them down. You know, yep. once you get them, I, I tell people this all the time, you know, physically, you know, I physically wrote these, you know, I didn't, maybe you have an app. I don't know. I didn't type them into the computer. Um, I didn't speak to them. I did, I did speak to them on my phone and they transcribed, but there's a lot of power, brain power, you know, taking the pen and writing it down. All right. The last question that and you asked. Related. <laughs> related to the previous question. Uh, well, absolutely. All four of them go together. Um, how are these fears? holding you back in life. And I wrote number one, it's holding me back from being complete in all the business operations that, that I need to have in place. Uh, I'm holding back in really growing my business to its full extent 
by not addressing all of the business operations that need to be addressed. And for a background, I was an independent solopreneur for a number of years and certain things I just didn't have to, you know, weren't important to the growth of my business. Uh, now there are things that I've begun to identify that I need to put into play uh, for us to be, to reach those numeric levels I mentioned before. And I also think that the, that, uh, you know, the fears are holding me back from being the business leader and the best revenue generator that I can be, you know, um, you know, it's funny with our business. There's a lot of people who think that we're much larger than we are and, you know, we're successful and we're, we're very proud of our success and of where we're going and who we work with. But, you know, I go back to a, a story I heard years ago, uh, you know, a basketball story, Larry Bird at the time was the greatest basketball player in the world. And he was the number one scorer in the national basketball association. And he was unsatisfied with how successful he was. He wanted to average two more points per game. You know, this is a lot of these athletes, you know, the Michael Jordans of the world, you know, the Bryce Harper's of the world, you know, they're hitting or they're scoring. And we're like, Oh my God, you're like the best in the world. And they want to average two more points a game, which would make a huge difference. You know, in sales, if you get past what's holding you back and make three more good interactions, right, with prospects, and I don't mean just make five more phone calls, who cares about that, but three more interactions with someone who can help you grow your business and something stopping you, whatever it might be, whatever the fear might be, we're going to uncover, you know, your business can grow double, 10 times. I, you know, we'll take you back to the first fear that you address there and its impact on you. So fearing the decisions that I make coming back to haunt me, that will prevent you from making the decisions to grow your business. Yeah. So the first step of this is identifying that the fears exist. Yes. But really, I mean, we're going to get into this, but it's really about naming the fear and yes. really breaking that fear down. Yes. So, yeah, but this is, um, and this is how it starts yeah. <laughs> now coming into this book, you know, for people who have just read it, they're only seven pages in and they're identifying what they know about fear and how fear is affecting them. All right. So, so give us a little bit of a peek into, uh, Again, what we're going to be talking about by next uh, Sunday show. So what we're going to talk about next is what is fear. So really understanding what it is. And that's over pages 11 to 23 on page 23 is where the questions exist. But it really breaks down what these what fear is and the different types of fear that are out there. All right, once again, so for people better yeah. identify it. All right, for people listening again, the book is called Crossing the jo Zone of Fear. And John, the book's available wherever you get your books. On Amazon, yeah. Yep, up on Amazon. And uh, again, my name is Fred Diamond. I run the Institute for Excellence in Sales, and I'm the host of the Sales Game Changers podcast. And we're talking to John Knotts. He's the author of, uh, my friend, he's the author of Crossing the Zone of Fear and, and five other books as well. And he's working on his seventh. You know, it's interesting. I published two books two years ago. Uh Insights for Sales Game Changers, Love Ho and Love Hope Lyme with family members, partners, and friends who love a chronic Lyme survivor need to know. And I'm not working on another book, but maybe there's a fear there that's uh, stopping me from publishing the two because people liked, you know, and, and the, the sales book, there's, there's a lot of sales books out there, but I've gotten so many great compliments on the Lyme book. Uh, I've had thousands of people, you know, who reach out and I've started a podcast also called the love hope line podcast. And uh, I've had people that didn't even know exist. who have reached out and thanked me for that. And I've said, what are you going to do next? You know, what's your next book going to be on? And uh, maybe this will help me. And, I, and I'll tell people, man, I've only gone through the, well, I've read the book, but I've gone through the first seven pages taking notes, like we're talking about here. And I already have begun, you know, once you state something out to the public, out to the universe, you know, things begin to happen, right? you begin to see with fear, you begin to see, I've begun to see where it's holding me back, you know, and I thought I knew, but then it's like, okay, not addressing that fear is also 
stopping this from happening. Yes. Um, and I can also see very where related, very related. <laughs> I, I can also see where people were telling me, you know, what's, what's fearful for them. I'm like, okay, I can understand that. It's not a fear for me or it is a fear, but I can see where that's coming from. All right, John, I'm excited. We, we were supposed to go a half an hour. We've gone like 45 minutes, but I appreciate everybody who's, uh, who's listening today. If you're not linked in to John and myself, go connect with us, go buy the book. And uh, I'm excited you lasted this long. And I'm excited for you to go through us on this journey, crossing the zone of fear. All right. Thanks, John. Have a great day.